literally never broken up with someone and then, or been dumped by someone or any, whatever, you know, whatever way it happened and had them move on to someone who I was like, that person's better than me. And it's not just because I'm me. It's literally cause they weren't. Um, and I just want to put that out there into the world, <laughs> not better looking, didn't have more money, not smarter, not more interesting, not funnier, none yeah. of the things. And you that's date Corinne and then you date down after that. Pretty much across the board. What up, fuckers? How you doing? Where you been? You drink enough water? Where you see, Belle? Welcome to another episode of Guys We Fucked. It's the Anti-Slut Shaming Podcast. I'm Corinne Fisher. I'm Christina Hutchinson. Welcome to the show. If you want to send us an email, it's sorry about last night's show at gmail.com. And make sure to grab your tickets to our last Guys We Fucked live show in New York City of 2023. It is December 1st, 9.30 p.m. at the Midnight Theater. It's Ticket a Friday. link is in our bio. Uh, and you can also buy a live stream ticket if you're not in New York City, if, that, uh, if you want to save in money, if you want to have a viewing party. There's a million reasons. You don't have to give us the reason on the live stream ticket application. No, All you, you have to do it. is just put your credit card number in. Yeah. Cha-ching. Cha-ching. Capitalism, baby. And we comedy. got it. But the live shows are really, really fun. And obviously it's like the most fun to be there, but yeah. you can't be there. Being on your computer is close enough. Uh, today's subject line from our fucker mail says, cheating wife and autistic son and another baby on the way. Sounds fun. Mm. Hi guys. First off, big fan of the show and have been listening for years. Luckily, I've never had a reason to write in before, but that all changed a few months ago and I could use an unbiased third party's opinion on my very complicated situation. Let's go. I mean, oh, I have bias, but just not knowing you personally. Yeah. I'm a 33-year-old man from Australia and I live with my wife and our five-year-old son who has autism. This already adds a level of complication to our lives as he doesn't sleep much, has a very limited diet and is still in nappies. That's diapers. That diapers? Oh, okay. That's diapers for those of you uh, who don't speak Australian. Uh, meh. All of this coupled with multiple therapies and the extra cost of having a child with special needs makes for a very high level of stress. My wife works full-time and I gave up work in 2020 to care full-time for our son. Nice. A few months ago, oh, I had I a feeling that. something was going on with one of her coworkers. So I snuck a look at her phone and sure enough, Whoa. there were text messages and nude photos alongside of photos of our oh. son. Wow, men get that intuition too. That's good to know. Yeah, the messages went back to 2020 and it broke me. <laughs> I had no idea what was going on and even felt sorry for this man as his wife had been unwell and recently had open heart oh, surgery. no, dude. He is a lot older than my wife and has grown children. Prior to finding out my wife and I found out we were expecting another baby. Oh, and no. And while she ensures me it was never sexual, of course, it makes me wonder about paternity of this child because <gasps> oh. it lines up perfectly and I'm pretty sure I'm the father, but it still eats at me daily. Oh, God. Well, I mean, just get a paternity test. Then. Yeah. I think you're allowed to. You can she get was that. cheating on you. Yeah, that's fair. She told me she ended it by, di I discovered text messages twice more after that. <sighs> yeah, well, I mean, like any relationship, when this, once they say it's over, like, is it really over? Yeah, you gotta double check. You, you gotta, gotta double, double check. check. All I feel is deep hurt and I can't understand how could she, she should want such an old, overweight, awful man wow. who cheats on his sick wife over the man who has been with her for over 10 years. That's a fair question. Who has been there through all of the hard times, the death of her mother, the diagnosis of our son, a man who has always been faithful and present through everything. Damn. It feels like a kick in the teeth and makes me feel like I have no value in this world. I'm really struggling, but just trying to focus on myself and my son. I don't know what the future holds and I don't feel safe and secure like I once did. She is now withholding all affection. Well, that's, oh, that's abusive. What? Oh, that's emotional abuse. Yeah. And I won't talk about it and I feel very alone. She won't fucking talk. Any about advice it. is appreciated. I have attached photos so you can put a face to the email. Okay. Nice. I, I don't know. Like, oh, I wanted a picture you, of her. Yeah. Damn oh, it. your son is cute as hell. You, if I had to guess, I would guess you were from Australia. I don't, I've never thought like, what does an Australian guy look like? Yeah. But I would say you. And I, I never thought it. that until I saw your photo. You look I very believe Australian. It. Well, um, yeah. Gorgeous I mean, eyes. So first of all, about like why she would want that other, other guy over you. Like what I'll say is like, I've literally never broken up with someone and then, 
or been dumped by someone or any, whatever, you know, whatever way it happened and had them move on to someone who I was like, that person's better than me. And it's not just because I'm me. It's literally because they weren't. Um, and I just want to put that out there into the world. <laughs> not better looking, didn't have more money, not smarter, not more interesting, not funnier. None yeah. of the things. And you that's Corinne and then you date down after that. Pretty much across the board, a hundred percent across the board, I'll say. Um, so you can't, and, and listen, it boggles my mind too, sir. I don't understand. Most times when someone, it's it's a reflection of how the person feels about themselves. It has yeah. nothing to do with you. And so the cheating on top of the cheating down, you know, is because oh. that's a reflection about how the person feels about themselves. It doesn't matter. You could do all the things in the world. Sometimes it could be because your wife feels like she's, maybe she's not giving enough. She feels like you're home with the autistic son and she's out doing something maybe like meaningless and she lost purpose in her life. And so she's like, I don't even deserve this guy. I'm going to go fuck this fat boss that I have. Like that could be, wow. the, that could be the- Wow, women do that too. Cause men yeah, do do that. Of course. They feel like they don't have a role in the relationship. Exactly. It's wow. just like, it, or he was giving her attention and maybe maybe you thought you were being present and you know, and not to blame this on you, but just maybe, maybe a lot of times when people have a kids and especially I would imagine a kid with special needs, the dynamic in the household shifts, right? And so now- both parents are worrying about the kid more than they're worrying about each other. And that deeply affects people in a yeah. relationship. So it's like, it could be any number of things. Like, don't be like, oh, it's, 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 when people are cheating, it's very rarely like that they got someone better. It's like they got a, it's like a bag of Doritos over like a fine, you know, it's like a seven course meal. It's not better. It's just like scratching Different. whatever itch that they have. Yeah, and that's it's, all it is. And it's weird. The Esther Perel's book, uh, "The State of Affairs," is a really interesting um, examination into cheating and all of the parties involved, including the the spouse that gets cheated on. And it's one of the it's one of the weirdest things because it's not personal, even though it feels a hot, that it's only personal. Sure, even though it's not like Corinne said, it has everything to do with how your wife feels about herself. The withholding affection after she fucked up, like she should be putting a lot of energy and effort into getting back into your good graces to rebuild the trust. I definitely think you should get a paternity test on the, on the kid, uh, for sure. I think that'll give you some peace of mind. And I think that's a very fair thing to ask. Your wife doesn't sound like the way she's behaving to you right now makes me sound like she might be reactive with this question, but you should a hundred percent ask for one. You have every right to, that's a very fair question. It's also like, I hate, it's awkward to even bring this up, but like, I don't think it should be because I like to talk about abortion nonstop, but like, it's like, what, did you have a discussion about why you're going forward with this pregnancy? I know it's it's very rare to get an abortion after you've already like had a child together. I know that's like, it, it, like statistically it must drop so much and you're mm. already married, but it's like, why, why are you not, doing- That doesn't sound like a great time. Yeah. And, and being bringing a child into the world in like turmoil between the parents- yeah, I mean, if you, you whatever your choice is, it'll be fine. Of but course, it's more, it's more, it's more not that about. I'm, we're saying like, oh, get an abortion. It's more just like, did you have a conversation about like, are you just going ahead with it because like you already have a kid and that's like what you feel like you're gonna do? Like, yeah. how far along is she? Have you considered? I don't know. I mean, people really don't like me when I like I when I bring up a topic like that. But hey, you wrote us. I mean, it's um, yeah, it doesn't doesn't hurt to consider it. It just feels a little bit uh, odd timing, especially if you're like kind of like even questioning the paternity to begin with. It doesn't seem like there's any trust there, and it's seems like maybe you should, who knows how this is going to, this marriage is going to end up going. Like maybe you could go and, and find someone who's going to treat you nicely. Yeah. It, I don't, I'm not surprised that she's withholding affection because she feels bad about herself. Right. Like I've had exes who like, they're not showing up in the relationship and I'm like, kind of like, and it makes me feel like I'm doing something wrong. And then I'm like, Oh wait, no, you're not. Yeah. You're the one who's doing something wrong. And then you're like, you're like punishing me as if I did something wrong, even though I'm actually trying, like I'm working overtime to try and heal this when you're yeah. just pulling away from me. You know, that's like a very a common twist to the knife. It almost seems like maybe perhaps she has like a bit of mass masculine energy in the relationship. And that could be the fact that, you know, you're a stay home dad, which is like, um, less common. Right. So it could have changed the, uh, gender dynamics in the relationship a little bit. And which I'm used to, because I'm usually the masculine, uh, really, uh, uh, energy in a relationship, even though I try not to be, it's just, you know, how it is. Um, so she's kind of acting in a lot of like typically, uh, male ways, which as you can see, sir, are not good. Yeah. They're not great. It's so funny. I was just on scrolling on Instagram before we recorded. There's this woman. I'm not, I forget her name. It doesn't matter. Um, she's like a podcaster therapist. She's like a hot, she's a hot chick mm. who gives controversial advice. 
Um, is it the Asian woman or the? She's not Asian, but she's like, some. I don't think she's white. She, yeah. but she's beautiful, yeah, and she's like forty, is. maybe. Yeah. Like that's how I'd group her. Yeah. But she was saying like, um, men, a woman will never respect a man for forgiving her for che- like if the woman cheats and the husband forgives, she will never respect the man again. Mm, and I'm that's like, interesting. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, ah. Okay, so then what do you do? Then you just automatically divorce when the woman cheats? Uh-huh. Like, yeah. how? where do you go from there? I guess um, so. Yeah, so I'm sorry that happened. That sucks. And I hope that, uh, I hope she is in therapy. Doesn't sound like she is because she resorted to things that are like, let's blow up the marriage instead of like working on things. But um, you deserve more, sir. And that fucking blows. Yeah, uh, don't feel like you have to stay just because no. you share a child. Oh, it sounds yeah. like you should just get custody and then she could just go off on her merry way, honestly. Yeah. I know you need money though, so. That's true. What well, are you hopefully do about Australia that? is a little bit nicer to people in situations where if like one parent's the caretaker and you get a divorce, I don't know. We'll have see. Have you ever thought about monetizing your autistic child through a series of reels on Instagram? Oh yeah, that happens a lot. Right? There's, there's this pa- these parents that- Daddy and son. Yeah, there's this one account that's like, um, I think the guy's name is Jacob. I'm like, what are you going to draw? And he's like, yes, mommy. Like he has like, a, you know, he calls his parents mommy and daddy. It's really sweet. And then uh, and then he draws something, but it does feel a little like those people on YouTube that like surprise a homeless person with a car, but then they have a camera in the homeless person's face. And I'm yeah. like, something's kind of fucked up about that. Yeah. Don't yeah. like it. I mean, I'm glad that homeless person's getting a car. Probably need a home first, but uh, don't put the camera in their face. Like you're just doing that. That's gross. Then that's, that's weird. yeah, that is the vibe. But that being said, it's 2023, it's Wild Wild West out there. If you wanted to make money off of it, you could. Um, there's also a lot of like dads, single dad. That's a that's a great thing to make money off of or to like influ- be an influencer about because um, it's just like a beautiful thing and you're not really exposing too much. I was kind of joking, but yeah, I mean, it is a way to get money if you really want to. But yeah, or, or I you could get an American on you. Yeah, but I feel like probably protect your son's identity. A hundred percent. He yeah. has no say over the yeah. oh, over his involvement in the videos. He's probably not great. Yeah, yeah. he's five. Let yeah. him be five. Maybe write a, write a novel or something. These okay. are all really shot in the dark ideas. You probably need an actual skill to make money. Yeah. Fast. Yeah, you got cool curls. Yeah. I never see curly routines for guys. This is all internet-based stuff. Sorry, I keep, I keep suggesting Have influencer. you thought of hot gluing beads on... Christmas ornaments and selling them on Etsy. A lot of women do do that. Pouring candles. Mmm, soy ones that don't that are paraben free. They won't clog up your the congestion of your indoor air quality. Listen, there's a lot of options for working for home from home now um, since COVID. So I think that's probably what you're gonna have to look into. Yeah. Or I guess work on this marriage. That seems harder though. Yeah. <laughs> What do you, what say you, sir? Um, make sure to come see us live after you get a ticket to our December 1st show at the Midnight Theater. Uh, come see me headline Zanies in Chicago, November 10th and 11th, and then Zanies in Nashville, November 12th for one night only. Tickets are available at the link in my bio on all my social media. And also sign up for my Patreon. I'm doing it uh, four times a month. We do weekly Zoom group therapy. Um, I'm, I say therapy because I'm not a licensed professional, but I'm pretty good at facilitating and I'm really good at handling dark subjects that like are scary to talk about and the more I do these zooms the more I realize like people don't have a lot of people too many people that I've witnessed in these zooms and then just in life don't have like a friend group where they can just say what's on like if they're going through a hard time like they feel like they can't talk about it to the friends that they have I'm like you gotta get you gotta get friends where you can talk about that shit I promise you life is way better but anyway if you don't have friends or if you even if you do uh, patreon.com slash Christina Hutchinson will get you access to uh, to be able to participate in one of the four group Zooms uh, there's one day a month now because I'm redoing the Patreon that's going to be steady and it's Tuesdays at the first Tuesday of the month at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at guaranteed uh, so that's the one guarantee and then the rest of the dates change to accommodate people in different time zones got a lot of people from England uh, in there so sign up at patreon.com slash Christina Hutchinson and of course you can check out me on my other podcast Without a Country it comes out on Wednesdays on YouTube Wednesday nights and of course everywhere you listen to podcasts including Luminary and Apple Podcasts we're going over over everything I mean obviously it's mostly Israel Palestine stuff right now but I think I am presenting a pretty even keeled uh, perspective on that which I really can't say about almost anyone else that I've seen I on the internet so it's one, pretty rough we're, do, we're kind of like going around and not just using um 
mainstream news news sources and really trying to find out what is happening in the Middle East, why is it happening, and will this be something that's ever be able to be resolved? And then, of course, going into uh, the 2024 election, there's a lot going on with what it looks like is going to be a Trump versus Biden uh, election. But you, you know, know. what? Who's who's second place in Republicans? You think? Mm-hmm. Nikki Haley. I mean, uh, people are far behind. I thought Ron DeSantis would have made a better play. He's still in the running. Um, uh, Mike Pence dropped out. Yeah, I, I mean, that. there's not anyone that's even close to Trump at this point. The I watched a video with uh, this guy named Cenk Ugar. Mm-hmm. Cenk Ugar. I watched a video on how to pronounce his name, too. Um, and have you heard him? He's sal- he's going to run mm. on the Democratic Party. And I, I was I wanted to ask you what you thought of him. He he with him, he's yeah. very impassioned. He's very I saw him on Pierce Morgan giving a speech about how like you know we are murdering kids in Gaza right now. Fucking stop! And the way he talked, I was like, ooh, you don't hear people talk like that. Like passion, like actual passion, and like sh- stop the bullshit. Like stop the you know. So he's very not a politician. I really like him a lot. Yeah, you know, there's also like RFK Jr. and is in the mix. Oh. A little bit, but I mean, I I, I don't. He's you know. seen, he, the family legacy politicians feels like that should never be a thing. It's like just, legacy admissions. Uh, I mean that's. I mean it's just. I just don't think he's. There's I, realistically, it's it's gonna be unless one of them drops dead, which also possible. That is I mean, Trump. Biden, Biden. It's Trump Biden. But yeah, I didn't really. I mean, him. Trump's not far. He's three years younger. Yeah, but he doesn't seem as old as Biden. No, he's just because just he talks nonsense all the time. He's actually like, there was an article in the New York Times today about how he actually, when he, if you actually listen See, no. to what he's talking about, it's not making any sense. He's constantly making mistakes and like, you know, mm. he d- he has a, he opens up his campaign trail now by like basically like doing an impression of Biden, but he also like never knows what state he's in. So <laughs> it's We're fucked. The dude. blind leading the blind. This is, you really do incarnate on this planet. It's, it's like a fucking comedy movie, but bad. Yeah. It's a bad comedy movie. Yeah. It's a comedy tragedy. But if you want to see me do comedy live, mm. uh, then you can come to the Comedy Store on Wednesday, November 8th uh, at 8 p.m. for Gash. Most likely the last Gash of the year. I think the tickets probably will be sold out by the time you hear that. We're already at t- a low ticket warning on that. But if not, grab one of those. That'll be super fun. And then, of course, uh, February 2024, I'll be in Washington, D.C. at the D.C. Comedy Law, February 29th through March 2nd. That ticket link is in the link tree link in my bio. Um, And now we are going to talk a little bit about our new themed month that we told you that was coming last week. And now it's here. It's called Men, a a celebration. celebration. It's here. Yeah, really excited to dive into masculinity. Oh, we should have worn mustaches. Oh, that would have been cute. That would have been cute. I'll get some on on Amazon for next time. That would have been so cute. That would have been cute. And like a beard or something. Yeah. Okay, next time. Um, I, you know, the state of masculinity, it's such a, it's such a vague term. I, I, I've talked about before on these intros, like asking men in my life, like, what does being a man mean to you? And they're like, ah, mm. uh, I don't know. And I, I asked on Instagram last night just to see if anybody, and I got a lot of responses. Um, uh, the question that I posed was, what was taught to you about masculinity and being a man growing up? And then I said, and furthermore, when you got older, did you agree with what you were taught or did you disagree? A lot of really interesting responses. Some of the longer ones, um, uh, I grew up uh, the youngest of nine kids. That's too uh, many. Yeah, it's way too many. Uh, six boys and three girls. I was fortunate enough to basically be raised by my sisters since my brothers were too busy being boys and preferred most things uh, over being stuck watching a baby toddler. So he was a little little guy of the family. I had uh, I had loving parents, but when you're surrounded by that many siblings, it's easier for all of us to take care of one another. A couple people said that, but if, like people who had a lot of siblings, like they just kind of, helped each other more than the parents. My sisters taught me that men can be emotionally expressive, have female friends and mentors and express emotions without feeling emasculated. I consider myself extremely fortunate. Uh, I'm lucky that I had, uh, this is another person. I'm lucky that I had many male role models, especially my dad. Masculinity wasn't the biggest or being the biggest or toughest. It was about doing things right, even more so when nobody was looking. Being a good friend, family member, being dependable and keeping your word was huge with my dad. Don't say you're going to do something and not follow through. That was how manhood was measured in my house. That's that's a that's awesome. That's a pretty fair one. Um, uh, uh, this other guy said, men don't cry except when their mom or dog dies. Even pretty late in life, I heard women say they'd never date or would dump a guy that cried. 
That's fucked. Uh, also, that women only have sex to appease their partner. Logically, I know both of these things are garbage takes, but it's insanely difficult to overcome that kind of thinking um, sometimes even now. And then this other guy said, they were never really, uh, these things were never really taught. Being gay really jumbled all of this around for me. Mm. I still struggle with all of, uh, what all of this means for myself and in my community. It's honestly crazy. I've had so many conversations with other male and AMOB, which stands for assigned male birth, uh, folks who have such vastly different ideas of what it means to be a man. And therefore their expectations of male from others is then completely shaken. Um, the this guy says uh, what is it being a man being a provider to not show emotion be strong so you can be the best uh, a good cry is better than a xanax uh what were you taught honestly nothing learned about everything i know uh from sitcoms uh boys can't That's wear hilarious <laughs> yeah and also sad yeah it is sad. uh boys can't wear pink have long hair or get their uh, paint their nails oh those are all my favorite qualities and, and any boy that i like would have long hair wear pink and then paint his nails that I sounds love, like the hottest guy ever. Uh, yeah a oh, dude guy liner oh my god nail polish and guy liner give me get get that penis over here if you want um that boys don't cry uh and we should feel less i highly recommend boys and sex by peggy orenstein uh, my uncles told me you needed to have multiple women and cheating was okay for men. Uncles mm. always give the worst advice. Yeah. Um, my dad and granddad taught me that you're not really a man until you're taking care of someone else. That sucks. How about you take care of yourself? How about start there? I agree. Don't cry. Don't show emotion. I ended up being both regardless, but it's still frowned upon. You want to be strong and capable, able to protect if needed. I'm Gen X, grew up a latchkey kid. I don't know what that means. Uh, I never was taught any specific traits for what define masculinity. Actually, kids are like they're like it's like the poor like poor it's usually like poor white America like. I, I associate latchkey with heard like, the phrase with like Appalachia, but oh, let's that reminds me of Appalachian emergency room sketch on SNL. Yeah, what a. Oh, a child who returns to an empty home after school or a child who is often less home. Yeah. So it's like most likely raised by like a single mom, I'm oh, guessing, okay, got it. and was left at home without a lot of supervision a lot. I just like, I always associated with like, with like- Appalachia. Po with poverty. Well, mm. with poverty. Ah, uh, got it. So, but I've um, actually, I've only heard, pe but I've also only heard people- I feel like I only heard white people describe themselves as that, but I mean, it's not, it has nothing to do with race actually. Uh, and that's why we look things up. Uh, goddamn right. Uh, this person said that you should do things for people without thanks or payment. Dad was always doing chores for people. I learned walk it off, rub dirt on it. Never allowed to admit being physically hurt. I was taught shown that being a man is being able to provide, provide, provide. Uh, that femme was to be honored, respected and protected. I still believe it. And so that reminded me of like growing up, my dad uh, had this weird thing. And my brother and I talked about it. I saw my brother this weekend. We were talking about it. Like, That's so bizarre. But he, he was very, uh, very strict about this. My brother is eight years older than me. Couldn't like yell at me. Yeah. Couldn't like push me. He, would, he wouldn't do that. He's a very gentle, like even keeled kind of person. I got all the fucking crazy in the family. But, um, well, my mom. But- uh, if my brother like looked at me weird, my dad would freak out at him. Like one time he got pissed at me because I did something kind of fucked up to him. Like I would take a lot of my aggression out on my brother cause probably cause I knew I could. Um, and then he didn't push me, but he did something. And I was like, dad. And my dad, like re he's like, you never raise your voice to a woman. You and, and I was like, where is this? But me, both me and my brother were like, you're being a little, this is a little weird. I don't know where this is coming from, but it was this like hyper masculinity of you have to protect the woman and the woman is delicate. It was mm -hmm. kind of like that. Like I wasn't allowed to do a lot of things that my brother was allowed to do when he was my age. And I would ask my dad, I'm like, is this cause I'm a girl? And he would be like, yep. Yeah. And I'm like, that's not fair. And he's like, oh, you're going to yell at me? You're grounded for two weeks. I'm like, no. And he's like, oh, you're going to keep yelling two more weeks. That's how I was raised. Yeah, I would say I, there was very little differentiation between my brother and I because of like uh, our sex or our gender. There was a lot, like I would say if anything, I got like more responsibilities, but also more privilege because I was a, a, a gal, but it was but it was just because I matured faster, mm. which I get, I mean, I do associate that with being a woman, but it's also could be like my personality. personality. 
So, so you it was earned, stuff like that. You earned the ability to have more free freedom. I mean, I'm also the older kid. Yeah. 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 Obviously, yeah. everything about me says that. But yeah. 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 So yeah, but that was ne- like never like a thing. But also, you know, like I had my, you know, my parents in many ways, the, I feel like the gender roles were a little swapped in the house, even though my dad was, you know, going out to work. My mom started working again when we were, when I was like in high school. So she went back to school, got her degree, went back and became a teacher. She had been a realtor previously. Yeah. My dad had the baseball card store the whole time. So I always thought like, I always thought it would be really cool to grow up with a sensitive dad. Mm -hmm. Like that, there's so much value in that. I think a, a man who is sensitive and like, uh, in t- like who likes poetry. Like that's so, to me, such a, so beautiful. Like that's, it's a very specific thing. When a man is into those things and has those qualities, it's like, it's very beautiful. And it's yeah. different than when a woman is into them. Yeah. I mean, my dad rocked. I mean, like there's like, the thing is though, it's just like, mm, yeah, he was, uh, what was I going to say? I've just lost my train of thought completely. But yeah, no, he was, uh, he was great, very, in, and also just like very interesting. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people don't have interesting parents. Um, That's true. That's very true. <laughs> a lot of people don't know much about their parents. Yeah, my parents are, are very interesting people, which I don't really, yeah, I don't see that a lot. And then also, um, yeah, I think just having having people represent, like I was never, these houses, like you would watch a TV or a movie, and I was like, wait till dad comes home. It's like, I didn't think that was healthy or even sound good or like for what? Like wait till dad comes home. Like you're gonna, gonna be in like, you're gonna be in even more trouble. Like oh yeah. Like that got I don't think lot. it's great to like walk around like fearing your parents. The same way I don't think it's great to walk around fearing God. I certainly like it's not like I it's not like I felt like I could do anything I wanted. I certainly knew that there would be repercussions if I didn't follow the rules or like get good grades or like show up in ways that I was supposed to, but I wasn't like walking around my house fucking quivering. Yeah, I was. was Yeah, and dad was my dad had a temper, and it was very yeah, it was very. And all the kids in my neighborhood, I don't know if it has anything to do with the military, but uh, they're all military dads. I don't think we had any military moms, but uh, it was all like very much fear the father, fear the fucking father. Woo, woo, he's gonna beat the crap out of you, or he's gonna, I don't know. Um, no, if anything, I know, I know my dad would give me 20 bucks if I wanted a stuffed animal and my mom would never give me the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You always know what parent to get to, to go to for what. Dad, can I have money? My dad also had a lot of cash on him because of, of this, owning the business. Because of his nature yeah. of his work. So he had a lot of cash. Mom, mommy had credit. That is another interesting facet I never thought about, having interesting parents. Mm-hmm. Like, I think about it all the time, like the stories I hear. And like also just like culturally what I know about that other people don't know about, I go, man, you guys have lame ass parents. Yeah. My parents weren't like partiers or anything. Well, my dad I'm sure was back in the day, but not while, like, while he was parenting us. Uh, but yeah, and just like even the stories that people tell about my parents, like very interesting really? people. That's yeah. cool. A lot of personality. Yeah, they love pop culture. Mm-hmm. They love, like they have very like, passionate interests. I love mm-hmm. anybody with a passionate interest. I think that's great. Yeah. Beyond like having kids, like, and it was beyond their role as a dad or a wife or whatever. Like it yeah. was, cause that's not, that's not everything. And that's not all that defines you. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I was thinking about too, um, men not feeling like they know what their role is in a straight relationship, particularly. I'd be mm-hmm. curious, like in a, in a relationship where the, it's the same sex, a gay relationship, like I, there has to be roles just so that there's some type of yin and yang of, of energy, right? Like any gay couple I know they're, it's just the same. It's oh, the, really? It's this, it's, it's fucking the, they're one's the man, one's the woman oh, for lack right, of that. a better yeah, word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if, well, cause we all yeah. have feminine energy it's and masculine One's the energy. feminine, one's the masculine. Yeah. yeah. But I think that makes it work. Like, cause, cause you each bring something different to the table. Otherwise, if you're the same, if you're the same type of person who likes doing the same roles in a relationship, then yeah, a lot of it's going to get overlooked. But uh, I think that redefining what it means to be a provider is really important because I think that fucks a lot of guys up because a lot of the people, especially a lot of people that like did the quick response to that Instagram prompt I posted, it was all provide, 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 provide. I'm like that, first of all- You're not providing much though. The thing is, it's like, yeah, redefine, provide. It's like, it's not monetary. Monetary is so- meaningless, honestly. I mean, I guess it's easy to say if you want, you know, people are saying, it's easy to say if you're not broke. Okay, so let's yes. just assume that you're not broke. That's obviously providing is important if you're fucking broke. But if you're like doing okay as a unit, then like, yeah, there's a million things you can provide. Security, comfort, emotional, emotional support. support, like uh, Fun. Enc- encouragement, enthusiasm. Yo, yeah. Encouragement's a big one. And just fun and laughing. 
and like not getting caught up in dumb shit. Yeah, be the, entertaining. The rest, the rest of the people that you see in your day are gonna give you all that. Like you, I always admired people where like they reserve their partner for like their fun time, like their fun mischievous side of themselves, like their partner gets. I think that's really nice. I've witnessed it a couple times in couples, but it's like uh, monetary. Also too though, having, if we go back to the fifties and sixties and seventies, I suppose, mm-hmm. probably the eighties as well. And maybe even the nineties. The man expect, being expected to be the sole financial provider, that's fucked up. Like that's not, I get that a woman raise, having and raising the kids is a huge full-time job, but like both of those things, if you're just the, the person that stays at home with the kid all day, or you're just the person that makes all the money for the family, that's too, there's no balance in that. No. You need more balanced roles. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's also like a, it's a weird way to kind of like, in a way, enslave women because it's like you're, you're doing an incredible amount of important work that must be done, but you're not getting a paycheck for it. Therefore you have no freedom. Therefore you can't leave. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people stuck in in emotionally and physically abusive uh, relationships, like, and they can't get out because they are the stay at home parent. Like Mm -hmm. that is so fucked. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that's any mistake. It was set up that way. Yeah. But I'd be curious, like what, like what are the other things I guess I'd want to hear from women with that, but like what if I, when I think of the things that I would want to be provided with, it's all the stuff that we just said, emotional support and laughter and love. Just Those lightening the load. I mean, I think part of uh, the bonus of being in a relationship is just lightening the load. Like there's so many things that need to be done in a day or yeah. to sustain yourself as like a human being on this planet. And just like, it's like, what do anything, just do some of it. Be helpful. Just do some of whatever it is that needs to be done. Yeah. And Take out not, the garbage, wash the dishes, fucking file the taxes, make it a doctor's appointment, like anything. Yeah. Just do That's something. so much more helpful. And it's like, Go yeah, grocery those, those little things like coming home and there's already dinner made or something like that. Like if that's not normally the routine you have, that's so nice. Mm-hmm. It is wild how much a small kind gesture goes a long way in any relationship Absolutely. really. But like, it's really, it's very potent. And you don't have to spend a lot of money to do it. Yeah, premeditating someone's needs, even if they're small needs and like providing something for it. That's providing. Yeah. Anticipating anticipating a need. Mm. My best, pro, like my, my boyfriends who provided the most were not, it was no correlation with how much money they had. They certainly weren't the wealthiest. Yeah. Same. I, I think of- I had two, I have two, the boyfriend now and then my uh, my boyfriend a while ago, uh, very good at like kindness and just like goofiness. Oh, love goofiness. But everybody's different. They all got different needs, but I want to provide goofiness. And then I want to, I wanted to highlight um, a man, my man hero of the week for when we're doing men a celebration, just men that I think don't get enough kudos and should be celebrated. Not necessarily having anything to do with being a man or masculinity. I just want to highlight a guy doing something cool. And this week I would love to highlight Paul Barton. Okay. And I'll give you his Instagram handle in a minute. But um, Paul Barton is a pianist who once performed in front of packed concert halls in Yorkshire. He now lives in Thailand where he performs for blind and handicapped elephants. And I'll show you this, Corinne. This is a video of Paul. He has his piano in the water. And the elephants will come up and all day he just fucking plays piano for these elephants. I didn't know piano uh, that elephants liked piano so much. This is so sweet. Yeah. And the ones, uh, yeah, I didn't either, but I imagine it's the vibration. Animals are very, um, very in tune to like music and oh, this Yeah, like is puppies something. love piano. I knew that. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. My dogs never liked when I played piano. That's Paul playing in Thailand. Um, but I want to give his Instagram handle, which is... Uh, Paul Barton dot piano on Instagram. It's P A U L B A R T O N dot piano. And the other thing I love about Paul Barton, let me let me get to his page. Paul Barton. You go to his page and he has a YouTube link of Paul Barton in Thailand. But it his Instagram page says nothing about him playing piano for uh blind and handicapped elephants. It's all how to play piano. He's just doing it for the love of the game. Exactly. He's humble. He uprooted his life after being very successful. And he's just in nature playing for animals who could use some more love. That's that's, the move. Yes. That's That's the the fucking move. move. I love that. I love Paul. So hats off to Paul. I wonder if any monkeys need a device. Oh yeah. They come up to him. (laughs) 
trying to fucking take this pot on the road. <laughs> I love that. Oh, it's great. Our first guest for men, a celebration is the chief of urology and a surgeon of Fifth Avenue Urology. This was a fascinating interview. We learned a lot, and Michael learned a lot, too, about his body. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show Dr. Dr. Yaniv Larish. Larish. 